In this video, we will be building a JavaScript browser-based game. So this will be our first game we build using the Canvas API. So this video will build upon some of the previous videos that I made using the HTML5 Canvas. So in this game, we will be using the images from the classic arcade game Pac-Man. Now this will be a little bit different from Pac-Man. We'll be using the Canvas to move our character around. We're trying to avoid the ghosts. And in this case, we'll be trying to stay alive as long as possible. So let's look at some of the code that we've set up here already, just to save us some time. So we are loading our image using JavaScript, and we have this onload event handler, and within it, then we have this loop using the set interval. So the set interval will call the update positions method and the update canvas method. So these are two custom methods that we've created underneath. So I've got the images already on the canvas, and you can see here that we're using the draw image method to create those and place those on the canvas. But the values I've input here for these images, we want these values to be dynamic. So the position of these images on the canvas will be changing constantly as we play the game. So before we jump into this, I just want to say that if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. And let me know in the comments what kind of videos you would like me to create in the future. So looking back at our canvas, we want our controlled character, our player's character, to be able to move up and down on the canvas using the Y coordinates. And the characters that we'll be trying to avoid will be coming from the right and going towards the left of the canvas. So they'll be going on the X axis. So these values here in our draw image is what we'll be changing constantly as the game is played. So the first variable that we're going to introduce here is for the x-axis for our image of Pac-Man. So that's going to be our controlled character. We'll be controlling Pac-Man. And I will also add the y-axis for our character. So let's go ahead and set up some of these variables to control the position of our graphics on our canvas. So the first one we'll add is the x position and then we'll add the Y position, so that's for our character. And then we'll add the positions for the ghost as well. So we're gonna have two ghosts on the canvas. They're both sharing the same image, but we have got two copies of it moving across the canvas. So we'll call it X position ghost one. And that will be based on the canvas height. And we're gonna times that by a math.random and the reason for that is that that will automatically give us a random position between the very top of the canvas and the very bottom of the canvas. So we don't know where it's going to start anytime we reload this game. So that keeps it a little bit interesting. So this will be position one for the X axis for ghost one. And we'll do the same for ghost two. So we'll also do the Y axis for both of these. And I think I've put these in the wrong order, actually. The, let's move this down to the y-axis. So the x-axis should be the canvas.width. So that will start just off the canvas. It will be on the right side of the canvas. And once we run our first frame of our animation, that will appear on the canvas. So the ghost will appear at that point. And the ghost two, I want to separate it out a little bit. I want it to be further across the canvas. So we can just say the canvas to width again. And this time we can add a, uh, we can multiply that by like 1.5 possibly. So that will space it out from our first ghost. That will be one and a half times the canvas. So it will be off the screen, but much further than the first ghost. So it will feel like multiple ghosts are traveling across the screen at once. So we'll constantly be having a different ghost in a different position. So let's go and take these values and plug them in now. So go back to our draw image for the ghost and we'll just add the positioning for X and Y coordinates. And we can just keep the last two values as they are. We don't need to change the height and width of our images. We're just gonna change the X and Y coordinates each time. So these can all be just left as they are. And now if we reload the page, you'll see that we don't have the ghosts on the screen at all. So they are placed off the canvas to the right. And we need the first animation frame to happen in order to see our first ghost. 
So let's use the update positions method now and we'll update the values of our x coordinates for the ghosts. So our method is getting called 30 times per second. So each time this gets called, we want to deduct the left position of the ghost. So the x-axis, we want to get less and less each time. And you can see now when we run the script that the graphic is moving over and over again, but our canvas still looks very cluttered right now because now we have hundreds of the same image stretched across the canvas. So in order to fix this, we can use the clear rectangle method. So that's part of the canvas API. So this will just allow us to reset the whole canvas. So I'm gonna do it from very top left and we'll do it the full width and height. And that allows us here, once we reload the page, it allows us to see the movement of the image without seeing a trail of graphics behind it. So it looks much cleaner, means that we can continue with animating our graphics now. So we'll go back and look at the position of ghost one. So what we want to do now is if this ghost goes too far off the canvas, so if it goes to zero on the X coordinates, then we want to reset the positioning of that ghost back to where it started at. So in this case, we want to reset it to canvas.width and that way it will just look like the ghost is continually going from right to left. Now the difference this time is that we want to change the Y coordinates. And the reason for this is that we want the ghost to appear in a different position every time. So it will look like it is multiple ghosts coming from the right side of the canvas rather than just the same one over and over again. So let's copy this code and we will do the same thing for ghost two. And you can probably write a more elegant solution than this that doesn't have to repeat itself in such a way, but we're just trying to put something together really quickly to show how this might work. And once I reload the page, the positions aren't being reset, so I'm gonna debug this. So let's write a console log just to see the positioning of the x-axis for our ghost one. And we can also add the y-axis. So it's good to just quickly see what these values are and that way we can spot any issues. So let's go back to the browser, reload, we'll open up the console. So let's reload this now and see what happens. So we can constantly see the values and you will notice here that the second value is displaying as NAN, which represents not a number. So for some reason, our Y axis is not being set correctly. Once the ghost hits the left side of the canvas, let's go back to our code. And you notice here that we have missed something on the math.random. We forgot to include a parenthesis at the end of it. So let's try this in the browser again. And this time it is working, so we can see that the positioning is constantly changing. And that is just on a loop, so these images will keep coming over and over and over again. So we only have two instances of this image, but it makes it look like there are lots and lots of these ghosts. So let's clean this up by removing our console log. And now what I want to do is allow the user to move our Pac-Man character. So let's add an event listener for this. So we want to be able to move it up and down the screen, allowing us to avoid colliding with these ghost images. So let's add an event listener to the document. And what we want to be listening for is the key press or the key down in this case. So once a key down has been triggered, then we will call this anonymous function. And that function will return the event. So we forgot to declare which event we're listening for. So let's add that now. So let's add the key down. So once the function has been executed, we will run a console log to determine what key has been pressed. So each, each key on the keyboard has a different key code. So let's open up the developer tools in our browser. 
And once we reload the page now, we will be displaying the code for any key that is pressed. And you can see that now once we press up, right, down, left, we have all these different key codes and it allows us to use this number to determine what key the user is pressing. So we can determine that the user is pressing the up arrow and if the user is pressing the up arrow then we can move our Pac-Man character further up on the y-axis. So let's do that now. Let's say if the code is equal to 38 then we know that the user wants to move the character further up the screen and we'll do the same for the code equaling 40 which is the down arrow so I'll just add a comment here just to make it very obvious what we are listening for so the value that we want to change is the y position pacman variable and we're going to minus equal to I think we can do 10 pixels for this just the same as the movement on the x-axis and then if they press the down key they will increase the y position by 10 pixels so that allows us to move up and down in the same position so you can see that working now on our browser up down but the weird thing is happening here is that there is also browser based behavior based on the keys so if we press the up and down keys it can also move the scroll bar so in order to rectify that we can prevent the default action based on these two keys so you could do this for all keys that are pressed but if the user wants to reload the page uh, that may cause some issues so we're only going to prevent the default action if they press one of these two keys So let's try this once again and now that's working really nicely the browser window is not moving it's not scrolling so we can just interact with the character on the screen so that's looking pretty good right now now it's a very simple animation but you can see how that we are progressing with this and the next thing I want to do is add the 2d collision detection so I'm going to use this from a article posted by the Mozilla developer team and they have some basic code which allows us to quickly determine if two objects on the canvas collide into each other. Now you can read a bit more about it in the uh, article but I'm just going to use the basic code for this and modify it to suit our needs. I'm going to just grab this if statement. So all we will need to do for this is just to update the values. So we'll add a new method for this just to detect collision. And we'll assign that to a variable. So this method will return a true or a false value. And using that variable then we can determine if the collision has occurred so using the value return then we can decide if a collision has occurred then we can do something based on that so we can stop the game or we can uh, deduct a life of the, the user or there's many different ways we can handle that but we just want to detect if the user crashes into one of the ghosts so let's create this method and return the value I'm going to paste in this code and then we will replace the values with our own variable names. So our first rectangle in this case will be our character which is our x position pacman. So instead of rectangle 1.x let's just replace each of these values. again for the Y position and for our rectangle 2 that's going to be our ghost 1 let's copy this one and paste it in So 
this will be the Y position. And for these width and height values, we can just set that to 30 because all of our images are set to 30 pixels for both the width and the height. So within this conditional statement, then we want to simply return true. Otherwise, we will return false. So let's try this out in the browser. So we can see that our first collision detected has been logged to the console. And every time that hits, you will notice that that number goes up. So it's like five times it gets called every time there is a collision. The reason for that is that it counts it on every single square that the uh, character is moving. So there will be four or five times where this method gets called and both characters the ghost and the Pac-Man are on top of each other in this case. So that console log gets logged multiple times for each collision. But you will notice that it only happens right now on one ghost. So we will need to update that based on the second ghost also. So I'm gonna copy and paste the same code again, and replace the values. So first let's add another else if statement. And you can definitely improve this code. So I'm not gonna say that this is the best code ever, but we're just keeping it really simple here. I think the easiest way to make this code more efficient would be to pass in a parameter. And that parameter would take the value of either the ghost one or ghost two positions. So we really don't need to be writing this twice, but I'm just trying to keep things really simple here. So I'm just quickly replacing these values with ghost two. So this means that any ghost that comes across our canvas, we will detect collision with them at this point. So even though the position is constantly changing from the left of the canvas back to the right of the canvas, we will constantly be detecting any collisions. So that allows us to handle the game dynamics a little bit better. So now if we collide, we can do something like pause the game or stop the game. So you can see here that the collision detected log is being run over and over again every time we hit one of these characters. So what we want to do is remove this console log and we really want to break out of this loop. We can try that but that's not really what we need to be doing here. So what we need to do here is clear the interval. So we have this set interval that runs the loop over and over again. So we can clear that interval and that will allow us to pause the game. So the animation will stop on the canvas. And to do that, we need to name the interval. So let's set a variable and we will assign it this set interval. So we'll call this game loop. And that allows us to pass the variable name into the clear interval. And this will end our game. So let's try and see how that works. So as soon as we collide, the game is frozen and that is because the loop has been broken. So at this point then we can show a game over sign. So let's do this up really quickly. We'll create a rectangle. So we'll say layout.fill rectangle and this will act as an overlay across our canvas. So we'll have a 50 pixel space around the outside of the canvas and then we'll set a fill color for this rectangle. So we'll give it a gray color. And then we can add some text to the middle of that rectangle. So the text will just say game over. And I will try to align this quite close to the center of the canvas. So our canvas is 500 pixels wide. So we'll set this to 230 in both directions. And we forgot to set the color for this game over text. So it's probably being displayed in this gray color right now. So we're not seeing it. So let's try to change this, make this black. And we can also set the font here. So let's change this while we're here. 
So we can set this to a 30 pixels aerial font. So that should be quite big on the screen. Let's try to hit one of these guys. Okay, so that's kind of working. The layout's a bit messed up, but we can align that a little bit better on the screen. Let's change the positioning for our text. And we'll change the y-axis too. So that's looking much better. So we have the text on the center of the canvas. I think it's looking quite good right now. Um, we could improve this more. So one thing we can do is add a score at the top right of the page, top right of the canvas. So that score can be continually going up. So that score would be based on how long you can stay alive in this game without colliding into any of these ghosts. So let's do that right now. Let's create a score variable at the top. We'll call that points. And we'll start with zero points. And then within our loop, we want to be increasing those points. I'm just trying to find the right place to include this. I think we could drop it in here with the update positions. We'll say points plus equal to. Now, the number we assign here is important because we have to remember that this loop will be running 30 times every second. So if we have a number like 5 or 10, the points are going to go up really quickly. So I'm going to set this to 1 point. So every second that will be about 30 points. So then let's add a text to the top right of our canvas. We're setting the x and y coordinates. We'll set a color for this text. We'll assign a font size. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Let me reload the page. And it is off the canvas a little bit. I think our our font size is a little bit too big. We can reposition this too. We can play around with these positionings on the canvas. So we can see that the points are going up really quickly. I think this looks good. It makes the game a little bit more interesting. So that you have actually something to achieve here. And I think the alignment looks quite good right now. So what we want to do then if the game stops, so if we collide into one of these characters, we want to display that score on the game over screen. So we can see our score is going up, but once we crash into one of these characters, it doesn't really tell us anything more about the score. So what we want to do is put the score directly underneath now we'll conclude our game. So let's add the text. We'll add that at our collision conditional. So the text will be best score and we'll pass the score value. And then we'll just set the x and y coordinates. So again, we're just going to set the font color and the size. So let's reload the page again. And now we can see that we've got our score at the bottom of the game over screen. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the thumbs up if you enjoy this content and subscribe for more videos. And I will see you all in the next one.